Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about coping tools and strategies to heal from depression and anxiety. Have you ever heard of the term rumination? Rumination or ruminating is something a cow does when it chews its food over and over again. We depressives are very much like cows in that we don't chew our food over and over again, but we chew our thoughts over and over again. We ruminate on our thoughts, and most of these thoughts are negative. For example, have you ever uh, caught yourself thinking about the same thing over and over and over again? It could be the breakup of a marriage or a, a job loss or a bad investment you made that went south. Just chewing these things in your mind over and over again digs you deeper into a hole. It actually reinforces circuits in your brain that are negative and makes you hard to get out of that hole that you've dug for yourself by chewing over those thoughts again and again and again. Visual analogy of this process is imagine digging a ditch and you're in the dish and you dig and you dig and you dig and the more you dig, the bigger the ditch comes becomes and the more you're stuck in it. So that's what ruminating does. It's digging yourself into a ditch. Now, if you're someone who does something like this, I have good news. There's a very simple two-step process from a book called The Depression Cure that I just read about that I want to share with you right now. Step one, become aware of when you're ruminating. Develop an awareness of the rumination process. You can do this by having a smartphone or um, a timer. Set it to ring once an hour, and every hour check in with yourself and say, how much have I been ruminating the last 60 minutes? And put it on a 1 to 10 scale. So for example, if you've been lying in bed thinking about you know, your relationship breakup for 50 minutes out of the 60, you'd give yourself an 8. On the other hand, if you've been having a tea with a friend in the afternoon, your rumination might only be a 2. Uh, so again, the first step is to become aware, develop an awareness of when you're ruminating and how deeply you're doing it. This leads to step two. Okay, you become aware of ruminating, you know, when you're doing it, what you're ruminating on. You're aware of the habit that's, you know, got you. You're aware of the ditch that you've dug yourself into. Step two is based on a very simple but powerful fact. That is that people tend to ruminate and tend to feel the worst when they have nothing else to occupy their attention. I'm going to repeat that again. People tend to ruminate the most when they have nothing else to occupy their attention. You know how they say nature abhors a vacuum? Well, if there's a vacuum, your mind is going to go straight to rumination. So this means that the key to breaking the rumination habit is to turn your attention away from the inner world of thoughts and memories to the outer world of people and activities. Repeat that again. Turn your mind, turn your attention, turn your focus away from the internal world of thoughts and memories to the outside world of people and activities. It's that simple. And if you start to develop that habit, you will start to break the rumination process. So now we see the reason why the depressed person's natural attempt to withdraw and to isolate is so harmful and counterproductive. Because they withdraw from the world of people, they withdraw from the world of activities, and this automatically puts them in the spot of rumination. And so even though a lot of people feel they want to withdraw, they want to isolate, it's actually the worst thing they can do. Now, when it comes to activities, the best activities you can do are the ones that are shared with other people. Because we are mammals, we have an emotional connection to each other, we were raised as human beings in tribes. I'll do a whole other video on a book called The General Theory of Love. But basically, connection and intimacy lead to healing. Isolation leads to the exact opposite. Activities that maybe won't involve other people but are still taking you outside of yourself can involve listening to music, listening to a book on a tape, watching a video, or going for a walk in the park. In both of these cases, you're turning your attention away from the inner world into the world of activities and people, into the external environment instead of the internal environment. So either way you want to do it, doing some solitary activities or activities with other people, Activities with other people is definitely going to be the best because other people draw you out of yourselves. Either way, do those types of things and you will tend to less ruminate and feel better. Uh, you might call these things distractions. There's nothing wrong with distractions watching a video when you feel bad as long as you don't overdo it and use it as a way to avoid the world or, or basically escape life. This is Douglas Bach. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more about this work, you can basically go to healingfromdepression.com or you can subscribe to this channel by clicking on the link in the closing credits. And until we meet again, I wish you the best 
in your mental health recovery. And remember, do not spend too much time ruminating. Get out there, focus on people, focus on activities, engage with the world. Thank you very much.